governor does leave the hug any unused ballots in the box that the uh, table is checked in. Now, last night we did open up the annual town and school district meeting. A motion was made and seconded that we uh, postpone the meeting until tonight because of the conflict of the general, general election. We certainly appreciate everybody's understanding in this and uh, appreciate you uh, coming out tonight to attend this meeting. I ask everybody to please silence their uh, cell phones so that it will be uh, greatly appreciated. And if everybody would please uh, stand up and remove your hats and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the country. Any discussion? 
$188,000 that pushed down by a lot the amount we needed to raise in taxes. So last year our tax rate, and I, we discussed this at town meeting if anybody recalls, but our tax rate was lower because we had a surplus that we could pay, that we could use to pay the bills. This year we have a surplus of $75,000. Tuitions continue to increase. Um, special education costs have increased a little bit, and that's why it nets out to this difference. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a good cause of a 25% increase in first school costs. Well, when, uh, see, that increase in first student costs from last year to this year in the budget seems like a lot more than surplus of the down last year. Well, we so had. We had as I, as I said, we had a hundred, we had a hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars surplus. So that's about ten percent of our budget. And this year we only had so, or no, excuse me, that's about twenty percent of our budget. 
that was covered by, a, by money you'd already given us. You know, already, you, the town had already paid to the school district in taxes. And we had, you know, over years from leaving the old supervisory union and also decline in students, we had this extra money, you know, about 20% of our total budget that was allowed to be bought down. And this year we don't have that much to buy down. And that's where most of it is. About $100,000 this year. Right. In surplus. Right. And then for the 50 students we have, we have about a $500 per child increase in tuition. So that's whatever that is. You know, that's $25,000. So that's, and then we had an increase in special education costs. So that's where that's happened. Eric, I heard Absolutely not. We are separate from the Windsor, we're still separate from the Windsor Central Modified Union Unified District. I had to remember all the views. Um, we're still separate from that. We pay tuition to their schools, but we're not involved in the bond for the new build or um, any of the stuff that's going on there now, other than that we pay tuition to those towns. Any other questions or comments? Try to find another surplus next year. <laughs> Article 6. So we elect a school director for a three year term. Someone want to make a motion to accept this article? Charlie, seconded by Erica. Um, Ray Rice's term is up. There you go. We need someone for a three year term. Are there any nominations? I nominate Ray Rice. A motion to make. Uh, who, who made the motion? Uh, Jennifer. Move the nomination to report and we'll vote for you all. Second. All those in favor of Ray Rice, say aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. 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 We do attend their meetings, their board meetings. Ray fearlessly does that twice a month for hours at a time. Um, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And um, we owe him a big debt. So again. Seven.
Before we proceed with the vote, uh, Charlie's up here. I think I do want to just stand up and be recognized. Thank you. And Joyce, is she here? Where is she? Okay. Oh, stand up. And, uh, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. I know that Charlie and Trish were working on the theme and stuff, and I just wondered where that is and what the, um, where that would be if. Um, sure, if you're going to stand up, please, we can't go over here. Hey, Madison, um, I just wonder where we are with the FEMA stuff. I know Charlie and Trish are working on that together. Where we are, where, how that would proceed if we have a change in the system. Um, I can tell you where we are. Um, most of the FEMA work is in what they call a waiting period now. It's waiting to be signed off. Um, I think we've signed off on four projects that are completed, um, and we're and there it's in the terms to be reimbursed. Um, like I said, most of the projects are done. There are four outstanding projects that have to be addressed this coming season. Um, construction season, and that would be um, Park Place, uh, Tweed River Drive, and um, the cemetery, as well as the removal of the temporary repair and then the permanent repair at the um, far end of Upper Michigan near Mannings. Um, the approval for um, the, the permanent repair at Upper Michigan is gone through. We have um, received two grants um, to do the cemetery and park, uh, the cemetery and park place. And we've also um, are in the process for getting um, a grant for Tweed River Drive. Um, so there's still work to be done. Um, you know, George is going to have a lot of work to do at Upper Michigan because that's a significant repair that's going to be done. Um, there's still a significant amount of work to be done as far as signing off and moving all the projects forward um, from their, I guess you could call it, almost completion phase to being completed. Um, you know, I put a lot of hours in this year. I, I tried to get the town reimbursed for those hours, and that ended up not happening. Um, I don't know, you know, I put 400, over 400 hours in with FEMA. Um, I would say there's probably at least half of that coming up for whoever is going to, going to take the, the seat. Um, and they're going to have to dedicate a lot of time to it. It's not an, an easy task, and it's not a task that um, is uh, very straightforward. So that's where we're that's where we're at. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to say before we pass that ballot? Okay, at this time, we'll use the uh, blue ballot. Charles Pizzo or Joyce Stevens on this. And when you have it done, we'll come around this way, single file, come up front, we'll set them in the ballot box. It's because I stood up to the flag.
been my pleasure and congratulations, Joyce. Hey, that's the blister for three years. Elizabeth Warner, uh, some of us. from the, the auditors, so we actually have all three auditor positions that we have to elect tonight. Oh, we do? Yeah, we do. So. Okay. Um, and Amanda Barrett, um, one is for one year and one is for two years. So we will do the one year position first, I guess. Okay, so we need an auditor for a one year position. Does someone want to make a nomination? So? Uh, Sue Workley, I nominate Martha Byer for second. Nomination to make and seconded for Martha Byer's door. Second. Second, yep. Uh, Martha, would you want to stand up to be recognized? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other nominations for auditor for one year? Make a motion that the nominations be closed and one ballot be passed. Okay. Come on, second, second. Second, 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 uh, motion to make seconded that the uh, secretary pass one ballot for a math device to our all those in favor say aye. 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 So, uh, next one we need. Yeah. Need a. Uh, Audit for two years. Two years. Yeah. Are there any nominations? I can't hear you. <laughs> Are there any nominations for auditor for two years? Yeah. 
Somebody must be going to do that. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> nominations been made for Charlie. Someone won the second tally. Sure. Seconded by Marsh. Martha. Charlie, want to stand up? Do you like <laughs> Are there any nominations for auditor for two years? Someone want a motion that the secretary passed one ballot. Terry, someone want a second that? I can.
nominated here in the line. Second. <laughs> Motion has been made, seconded for yours truly. Uh, are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of that choice. Okay. <laughs> Next is Secretary Commissioner for Lima, along for three years. Uh, Mary Lee Stevens' turn is up. Are there any nominations? I nominate Mary Lee Stevens. Second. Motion to the main segment for Mary Lee Stevens. Mary Lee, stand up. Here. <laughs> <laughs> property and 
two installments on or before the third Thursday of August and the third Thursday of November by physical delivery to the tax collector before 5 p.m. We need a motion to accept this article. Motion to accept. Tim, and second it by Jen. Is there any discussion? There none. Someone will make a motion that we accept this. All those in favor of accepting Article 6, say aye. Aye. Article 7. Will the voters of Pittsfield authorize $20,000 to be placed in the reserve fund for the highway, uh, for highway equipment? Someone want to make a motion to accept this? Make a motion that we accept. Second by Terry. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Um, I don't know if it's really specific, but uh, the International is you know, 23 years old and it's in pretty rough shape. And actually, uh, Dave and I went and looked at a used camera truck yesterday that we're quite interested in. And we actually have the money in their equipment fund right now to purchase that, even though we're all in the preliminary stages here. But you know, the other parts are going to have to replace in you know, two or three years, so it'd be nice to build that up so we have that in the funds. Any other questions? Marsha? Just what's the effect on the tax rate? Do we have like the effect on the tax rate? So if you go into the budget um, summary page, it's yeah. Shows the percentages for each. Page yeah, 24 shows all the percentages. All the way over to the right hand column on the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah. correct that it wasn't that the tax rate went up the select board the select board um, has a lot of things to go and weigh and one of the things we have to weigh is 
This is capital planning money. Um, and we put $5,000 aside last year. This year, on April 15th, we had the flooding, and the, the town had to spend down the reserve fund that we had um, to do the emergency and um, emergency and access repairs to the roads that got flooded out. Um, so the town doesn't have the money to you know, a capital plan is something you want to do and to put in place to move incrementally towards being able to do purchases that you see coming down down the road in two years, five years, ten years. Um, and the select board, because the, the reserve was spent down so drastically, <clears throat> the select board felt we don't have the money to put forward in, in capital funds like we want to. So, but we, we know the importance of capital planning. We just felt we had to reduce the amount of monies that were being asked for because of the, the fact that we have to rebuild the reserve fund. We have, there are a whole bunch of things that have to be rebuilt. And, and you know, we managed to, the last two years, we managed to offset the tax rate with undesignated funds. <clears throat> we did that this year the best we could and still did not manage to get to where we were going to be able to offset the, the school taxes. So they're hard decisions to make, but they're decisions the select board, that's why you elect the select board, is to, to put forth honest, true facts about what's going on with the finances of the town. We floated a uh, $1 million note. Now, we didn't spend close to that doing the road repairs, but there's still, at this point, 320 some odd thousand dollars outstanding of that note that we did spend, and the Upper Michigan road repair is probably gonna be another $200,000. We don't have those FEMA funds back yet, so that's money that the town owes and that we're on the hook for. And until we get some of the FEMA stuff pushed forward and start getting some of the monies back and in place, the board felt that it was not prudent to, to go so high on some of these capital planning numbers. And that's what we had to do. Um, and, you know, I, I the board can speak to, uh, the rest of the board members can speak as well, but. They're very hard decisions to make, and they're things we have to be cognizant of. And we don't have the reserve fund, you know, to deal with another April 15th flooding. So we have to build that back up incrementally and move that along. And one of the ways we do that is by not putting so much into the things that are, we're building up for the future. Have any questions? No. I'm not second that, Terry. All those in favor of adopting uh, Article 9, say aye. Aye. <coughs> Article 10. Will the voters of Pittsfield authorize $30,000 for phase one of the town hall repairs as recommended by the town hall committee? Does someone want to make a nomination that we accept this article? Er? Segment by uh, Gary. Is there any discussion? And actually, on page, I think it's six and seven of your town report, <coughs> uh, the report of the committee on the town hall. Um, does anybody have any questions? And hopefully, somebody from the town hall committee can answer them. Sue? Um, I know there was a survey that was done, both online and uh, on paper. I wonder what the results of the survey were. <clears throat> yes, we did. Uh, we did an online survey, and then we also set up uh, distribution points for uh, paper copies, and um, we posted the survey results uh, when we tabulated all of the uh, all of the results, and you can find that on uh, the town hall website. Um, we. This report that's in uh, the town meeting is a condensed version 
of the full report that the town hall committee submitted to the select board in December. Um, that report as well goes into some of the um, findings of the survey, and I can I can give you a, a few of the a few of the findings. Um, a broad range of residents submitted ideas for options. More than a third of respondents lived in the town more than 26 years. Residents and taxpayers overwhelmingly believe the building is an historical treasure and an important asset. More than 67% of respondents um, uh, said that. Re uh, residents and taxpayers want to use the building for town meeting, but nearly 60% also want to see concerts and the bazaar followed by exercise classes and private functions at town hall. Residents and taxpayers favor a multi-year approach for funding and scheduling, repairing, renovating the building. More than a third of respondents said they would pay $100 additional tax dollars to fund these projects, followed by 17% who said $50. Uh, residents and taxpayers overwhelmingly do not want to replace town hall with a new building. That was nearly 70% of respondents. Yeah. Thank you. Any other, Terry? Yeah, how many pages do you anticipate? This is page one, three more pages. So I, I'm not speaking for the, for the committee, but they did put forward to the select board a three-phase approach. Um, I know that when the article was drawn up last year that I believe people wanted to know, um, you know, what the options were and what the, what the process was. I, um, you know, my, my only, I don't want to say it's a misgiving, my only um, question on this is it seems like this has moved towards one of those options where I, I feel the options are, are things that, you know, the town should be aware of um, and the voters should vote on. And, and I know the select board recommended the, the, um, the allocation of the money, but I, I also am curious as to this isn't the full amount for the first phase. So when, and I maybe ask the committee when they think that first phase will take place, to, does there more funds have to be put aside for that or? Well, I, uh, first, I, you know, I think the charge to the committee for the town meeting last year was to investigate, research, any and all options for the future of town hall. And the uh, town hall committee uh, broke into two, two phases to, uh, to satisfy that charge. And one was to come up with a uh, scope of work that needed to be done to, one, open up the, reopen the building, and then uh, secure its maintenance and, and upgrades for over an extended period of time. And two, we were charged with going out into the community to find out what the community wanted to do with the building. If it was worth investing money, um, and, and if so, what did you want to use it for? The recommendations that the town hall committee came up with was, one, to proceed with this phase one of a multi-year capital improvement plan uh, to reopen the building as soon as possible, and that is what is before the voters tonight. The second recommendation is that over the next year, uh, we recommended that the select board develop a plan to implement future phases of work the committee, the committee identified to maintain and renovate town hall and identify alternate financing to pay for maintenance and upgrades. So these other multi-year uh, plans are part of the uh, plans that we presented to the select board. The third recommendation that the committee made was to request the select board examine and correct any insurance or town policies that impede public use of town hall, establish a management entity to promote 
and manage community use of town hall and appoint a citizens group to identify future kitchen and interior furnishing upgrades and get cost estimates. Anybody got a feel for how much this is going to cost when we're done? The committee, and I, can I just take this moment to recognize the members of the sure. town hall committee because we worked for the, the whole year. We met, you know, at least twice, uh, twice a, a month. And I would just ask, uh, you know, to recognize Ray Colton, Carl Odell, Dave Larkin, Jeremy Rayner, Glenn Renauer, Betty Warner, Sarah Gallagher, and Keith Hopkins. So this was a very broad uh, coalition, I, I think, that we had gathered. And we had a lot of building expertise, we had design expertise, construction, even construction of historical buildings. Um, that helped us put together a scope of work. We looked at the building, what it needed, what we needed to do, what kind of projects we needed to do to a, get it open as soon as possible. We focused on the first floor substructure. Um, we even, um, so, and that's what this project would fund. Uh, that's what this article would fund, the first project. So that would include uh, the design and installation of steel beams to strengthen the first floor structure, which would also <coughs> then necessitate demolishing the basement's drop ceiling, rewiring basement lighting fixtures, and excavating around the south wall to waterproof the foundation and regrading around the front steps to address basement flooding. Um, the committee put its heads together. We talked to experts. Uh, in the field, and we feel that this phase one can be accomplished with forty thousand uh, for forty thousand dollars. That was the estimates that we came up with. Um, we also employed a structural engineer and an architect through Preservation Trust. Uh, both will are well versed in dealing with historic buildings. Um, and their inspection reports we just received, and they basically um, support the priorities that we have set for the projects to reopen the building. Um, in his report, Bob Nell from Engineering Ventures states that a public meeting room floor has to support 100 pounds per square foot live load per Vermont code. Bob's assessment of the current log joists capacity of the floor as it stands, as 50 pounds per square foot. And he says the wood beam that supports the 35 foot span in the floor system is substantially overstressed. That's why our priority at this point project is to, <coughs> is to replace the floor system, or at least structurally support it. Um, Tom Key, who is the architect from Preservation Trust, list water mitigation of the town hall basement as the number one project of high priority, and that's the other uh, part of the project. The, um, the other future phases that, we, that the committee identified go into roof repairs, uh, beam repairs, uh, replace angle truss braces, uh, standing seam metal roof when the uh, current asphalt roofing uh, has, has lived its, its full life. Um, and also, we identified insulating and residing <coughs> exterior walls. These kinds of projects, we put price tags on it. These are today's dollars. Um, you know, it's really up for the uh, select board or if the, if the select board decides that it wants to uh, name a building committee, let's say then that's for that committee to... Um, yeah, well, we have, we have, uh, we've identified, so we have roof repairs A, which includes beam repairs and then installing a standing seam metal roof. Uh, we estimate that around $29,450. Uh, or roof repairs B which is to replace the entire stress system. 
which includes um, a new ceiling, new lighting fixtures, remove the old roof, and install the standing steam uh, metal standing steam metal roof. And that we uh, anticipate estimated at fifty two thousand five hundred and sixty eight dollars. The cost of insulating and residing exterior walls we looked at we projected eighteen thousand. Any other questions? Comments? Yes, we have 10,000 in there that the town meeting has, uh, oh, so has already appropriated in the previous town meeting. So is it right now? We are hoping. Yes. A, I would like to hope. Oh, okay. <coughs> A, <Clark>. <coughs> My name is David Clark, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I got a, a, the engineer report from, uh, and it's referred to, unfortunately, I think those numbers are a lot hotter than we were talking. So I don't think that the money that we're talking, in, or I'm talking in the committee, is going to be enough to do that phase one. What are we going to do? to get more money. Is there going to be grants? It, it, you know, I know maybe we're eligible for grants, but it's not going to happen without like double the money phase one. It appears we were way underestimating on that steel lighting. Now, he did propose other uh, like structural repair that maybe we can do for the, to get the building over. But it isn't going to be the steel means, I do not believe, from what his estimates were. Well, I can let other members and, uh, and of the committee time. address that. So when we came up with estimates, we were basing it uh, on using uh, local contractors. Um, we also uh, we're utilizing donated design work. And most of the estimates from what I can see on the two estimates are using contractors that have a historical background. And as Tom says in his report, you're going to pay more money if you utilize those kinds of contractors. So these are decisions that uh, the building committee or the select board will have to make. Ellie? Well, with David's comments, what we're at now, over 100. So I think I'm hearing that the phases are, are spread out over a bunch of time and there's a, a it, from what Mr. Larkin said, there may be a more significant expense. Um, you know, looking back at the, at the, at the, um, at the minutes from last year, So it sort of is form an exploratory committee to research any and all future options for the Pittsfield Town Hall and have those options presented prior to the next town meeting. I'm wondering, my question is, did the, did the committee agree with this? Like, was this a unanimous agreement in this report? And, and has everybody in the committee seen the report and is, and what are their feelings? I, I, um, I know at the meeting, the whole committee was not at the meeting when they came and, and we got our report on the, on the report. Uh, when Ryan Warren was on 
Finals Committee. And I'd say when we got together, we all agreed and just finally what we would come up with. And a couple points I'd like to bring out that really haven't come out so far is when you look at our other options, it was shocking what it was going to cost to rebuild this. I mean, put a whole new facility in. It was in a neighborhood of three to four times what we're talking about repairs for this. The other option we looked at is, well, why don't we tear this down and just, you know, save it over or put grass in it? I tell you, that's what it's going to cost. It's almost going to cost you the same amount of money just to repair this stuff. So that's where it was like, okay, we said, what do we do with this? We're, every, every option we looked at is going to cost a lot of money. And you can't just let it fall down on its own. Um, that was not one of the examined, but as a, as a group, we did agree that this is the right way. Plus, when we looked at the survey, overwhelmingly in the town, they did want to have this facility repaired. So what we're trying to do is do a phased approach to start this, get it up so we can start using it. If, we're, if there's enough people using this facility, maybe there will be more enthusiasm to say, yeah, maybe we should really do a lot with make this thing a beautiful facility. Or should we just keep it kind of where it is, low key, the way it is now? That can change with time as you start to use this facility. You take a look at what was done in the library. The, the library is getting a lot of use now. I'm sure when you, people look back on it years ago, they weren't sure it would be used that way. And that's kind of what we're looking at. How do we get this thing back in use? And so this is the beginning phase. Now, I also saw what this other report came through on, on the estimates. I thought those estimates that this other person came up with were outrageous. And I've, I've been in this field. So, I mean, I just, I was shocked at it. But I think what we need to do is get going on this thing, to get the basic building so it doesn't fall down on its own. The water that's coming into that is just undermining everything going on in that facility. That whole um, flooring system is not going to improve over time if we don't do something with it. And so, I think by doing this, we can get ourselves moving more. In another couple of years, we'll we be asking for more money like the insulation? The answer is yes. Should we want to use it? Because you're wasting money right now with the heating of that facility. So yeah, you're going to want to do something with it. The roof that we talked about, you put multiple options together on roofing because when you do a roof, you have options. Um, so as a middle of every, you own a house, you know you're going to have to replace the roof after so many years, and that's what we got there. We have an asphalt roof. They don't last forever. And so that's why we're looking at maybe 10 years from now before that roofing piece gets done. Um, the basic structure up there is, you know, it, it'll hold up, but it's not great. But then, you know, the reason why we had two options on roofing was, if you're going to go out and spend, I don't remember the number, was $30,000 to put standing seam up, should you spend extra money to go ahead and replace all the rafters at the same time? Because why, you know, put something up without fixing what's fundamentally underneath it, then you know it will last for another 100 years. That's where we were looking at the different options. And we're not ready to make the final decisions yet. That's someplace in the future. But we want to look at everything as to what we would do to this facility over the next 10 years or so. But yes, the entire group was behind us. Okay? Uh, Terry? Does it make sense to table us for a short period of time to go get some tips to get a handle on what the cost any other? So wait, is it over four years or ten years? Uh, I think it's going to be always ten years. Ten years for this whole thing. So like one hundred and seventy thousand dollars over ten years, not over like three or four. Years. Well, the, the the dollar figure that's before the group tonight is thirty thousand dollars. And that's for phase one to get the building open. So in, in, in subsequent years, we put together a project plan and a schedule, set priorities, get prices, investigate grants. Preservation Trust has grant money available in at least three different uh, programs that I've been able, and we're, we are continuing to talk with them. And, and that would be part, uh, our, the committee's recommendation is that any grant money uh, be included in proposals for going to town meeting and asking for money. So that we investigate a, a broad range of, of uh, proposals to 
uh, utilize, maximize debt, tax dollars for these projects. Jerry? Stage one to go through a formal hearing process. I beg your pardon, Jerry. I got four. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said Jerry, not Jerry. Sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dragonis, there. Uh, all I got to say is this committee took on the job. I got to watch my language. There were darn if they do and darn if they don't. And I would just like to thank you for your efforts. Thank you. And how long did you So I have a, a, just a two-part question. So you mentioned the, the, the historic contractors. Is the building in the historic registry, is it a building that requires this historic preservation type of contractors, number one? And number two, I'm, I'm confused because of what uh, Mr. Larkin said, it, do we know how much the first phase is going to cost or do we not know how much the first phase is going to cost? We have estimates that the committee has put together utilizing expertise in design and construction uh, and engineering and utilizing uh, design work that's donated and local contractors who have put prices on these, they've done this work. Um, we have uh, estimated uh, for the water mitigation, uh, excavating the south wall breaches. We put that at $1,000. If you look at the estimates that the architect put for water mitigation, mitigation he's talking about five to $6,000 just for an excavator. And he is utilizing our uh, exca excavation uh, engineers that they have utilized in other historical projects. We, uh, as far as we know right now, we are not under any requirements to okay. utilize those kinds of historical contractors. Right. So, we're, and so the building is not like in a registry no, or anything as no. a historic no. building. Yeah, we're not under this. I did. So I, I haven't seen the, the the new report that that has the new numbers. <coughs> so I'm just wondering what is the difference between our original estimate and the and the new engineering. I mean, I'm sure there are the historic people are more expensive. However, um, you know how far off are we? in our estimate. I, I think it, it's a valid question. And is 30,000 plus the 10 that we have really enough for this first phase? Well, let me give you a few examples. Since we just, we just received these reports, so we I haven't even been able to you know, pr present it to the full committee. Um, but go ahead, Glenn. I think, you know, you're all you know, you're going to really know what's really going to cost us what I this. Exactly. And, you know, we haven't been able to move forward to get one but that's what's going to take. Then you so the question <coughs> is, man, if we don't have, if what we have is $40,000 and the bid's more, is, is that going to put the project off? What is it? Or is that going to be a decision that the board <coughs> will have to deal with and, and all that? Mm. Or do we look at something like Terry was saying, maybe putting it off, getting the bids, and coming back at a special town meeting with an actual number yeah. to authorize more money? You know, that's a possibility. I would think if the majority of us in the survey said we want the town hall, we ought to put $30,000 in the account to start funding the town hall. And that seems to be what the majority of us said. Well, I think that's a good idea. I think we should just vote on it tonight. Authorized $30,000 for, for phase one of the town hall report. 
prepared as recommended by the Town Hall Committee. Pardon me? Special 10. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Oh. Nay. expenses and liabilities of the town. I don't want to make a motion. We accept this article. Motion that we accept. The May 2nd. Any discussion? And I believe the budget starts on May 16th. The 24th, the 24th, 26th. Are there any questions or concerns on the proposed budget? right now uh, do not enforce criminal statutes. They enforce uh, civil statutes and civil laws that, that the town has. They will do service, they will do um, dog complaints and things like that. In order to be, in order to serve criminal statute um, uh, authority, they have to go to the police academy and Joyce, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the town has always voted that they didn't want to make the expense of sending the constables to the, to the academy because that would make them police officers and not first constables. They, they would be considered constables, but there'd be a significant amount of expense to number one, send them to the academy. Number two, they would have to be outfitted with, the thing, with things like a, a police cruiser or, or a vehicle and things like that. And, the town did not want the liability of dealing with that. Any other questions? <coughs> I want to make a motion to move. Motion to close. Pardon me? Motion to close. Motion to Someone want to second that? All those in favor of accepting Article 12, say aye. 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 All those. Article 13. Will the voters of Pittsfield authorize the select board to buy and sell real estate? Once again, this is just a housekeeping article. Someone second that? Same with Terry. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Accepted. Article 14. To discuss any other <coughs> non binding business which may partially come before this meeting. I want to make a motion to accept this article. So moved. One second. Second. Um, before we continue, uh, uh, Representative Cindy Haas usually attends our meeting because she's not here this year, and she's not going to run this year, but we have two candidates here. I'd like to recognize uh, Wayne Townsend.
There was a reason for that. Well, I and know that, but that doesn't help me. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm asking that. I've always worked with a pretty good turnout for a 6 o'clock meeting. Yeah, very good turnout. Yeah. And I've been working with a pretty good turnout for a 7 o'clock meeting, which feels like a lot. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and Patty Haskins for all the work they did to help us get through the FEMA incident and FEMA stuff that we had to get through this year. I know that took up a lot of time and changed a lot of things. Um, on April 15th, George and Trisha's work exponentially grew on that day and they stepped up and absolutely um, are responsible for the fact that this town got that dealt with in such a timely, quick manner. I don't know if many of you know it, but Pittsfield was the very first town in the state to have its declaration in place for funds and for um, to be declared a disaster area after that event. And that happened hours after that office opened in the morning. So thank you, both of you.